as promised, here goes the solution to coding challenge number two. All right, so here's the challenge again. Uh, let's divide it into parts. So first are the number one, two, three, and four. And then based on all of this, we create the function, right? So we start by creating a new array with some years. Simple enough, right? Just creating some space here. All right, so var years. Of course, you can use any name that you want. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to follow the variable names that I'm using here in my solution code. So 2001, 1985, 1994, 2014, and 1973. So just five years. And then we also create a new empty array called ages. So this just creates an empty array with nothing inside of it. So number three is to use a loop to fill this array with the ages of the persons. So this should also be pretty easy, right? We just need a for loop with the counter starting at zero and going up all the way until the length of the year's array dot length. And after each iteration, it just increases by one. So we have done this once before. If you cannot remember it, you can of course simply go back to the lecture and take a look at it again. Now to fill the array, I very simply do it like this. So ages i, so at the position of the current counter value, I simply put the result of 2016 minus the year of the person. All right, so we have calculated ages a lot of times now. It's always 2016 minus the year in which person was born. Now it's simply inside of a loop. It works the exact same way. Just to make it clear again, we start at position zero of these arrays, and then we will execute this loop until the counter is five, which is the length of this array. And as soon as the counter is five, we stop. And at each iteration, we write at the current position of the still empty ages vector, the age of the person that we have here in the years array. All right, and this is number three. Let's check out what we have to do at number four. So use another loop to log into the console whether each person is of full age as well as their age. Okay, so this sounds like we're going to use another for loop. So it's i equal zero. And actually up here we have to first define the variable, right? We didn't do it first. So we declare, we define variable i as zero, and then it goes all the way up to five. And down here we simply set it back to zero, but we don't have to declare it anymore. That's just at the first time. And now we execute this loop as long as i is less than ages dot length. And it doesn't really matter because the size of the ages vector will of course be exactly the same as the years. Okay, now we need an if else statement here because we want to log if the person is of full age or not. So we simply do if ages i is greater or equal to 18, then we log to the console person is, now let's put the age here too, age, plus years old and is of full age. All right. And if it's not the case, then we can use the same code and just say and is not of full age. So let's see if this works. All right, so we have a bug here, but this one is pretty easy to find because it tells us that at line 460, 
h is not defined. So 460 is here, and of course h is not defined because we called it ages. And the same happens here. So this should be corrected now. All right, and it works. Just need a space here, but that doesn't really matter. Well, it should be prettier if we had the number here, right? So let me put it here. Say person, and I can say a, and then like this. Okay, so person i is years old, and the same thing down here is. Okay, so person zero one three four, and to make it even better. And now remember that I should probably put the parentheses in here. See, if I don't put the parentheses here, JavaScript does the type coercion and it basically converts this one into a string. So it simply added the one as a string, but not as a number. But I wanted it as a number. So by putting it in the parentheses here, I'm telling JavaScript, hey, do this calculation first and then add all these strings together. And now we have it. So person one, two, three, four, five. So this looks a lot better, right? So person one is 15 years old and is not a full age, correct? 31 is a full age, 22 is a full age as well. This person is two years old, and so of course it's not a full age. And 43 years old, of course, this person is a full age. So this is working. Step number four completed. Let's take a look at number five. So now, we have to create a function which receives this vector of the years, so this one, as an argument, then executes steps 2, 3, and 4, and returns a vector of these Boolean values. True if the person is of full age, and false if it's not. Okay, and we already have done something like this here, in this loop, so I suggest we just create a function, so print full age, so function print full age and it receives a vector of years. So these are steps one, two, three, and four. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these right into here. So I should have cut them because I don't want this here anymore. Well of course, I don't want to define the years in here, right? So this has to be outside. Right, yeah. It said only steps 2, 3, and 4, and I also included the first step, which I shouldn't have, right? So the year stays outside. And then we create a new vector here, or a new array, actually. And then we do this calculation of ages. And down here, we print to the console if a person is of full age or not. Now instead of just printing it, we also want an array, right? As it says here, we want a true false array if the person is or not a full age. So I would suggest that we create a new empty array here and then use this if else statement here that we already have with the full age check and simply add the true or false value to our array and then finally return this array. So let's now do that. So var full ages, all right. So here is when a person is of full age. So it prints to the console that the person is of full age, and then we want to add this to our array. Now we could do it the way we did it up here. You see, we put the array and then the index number, and then uh, just put the value in the array. But there's another way of doing this, and so we're going to use the push method. So I'm going to use full ages dot push, and then push true. And if the person is not of full age, then I will simply push false to the array. And remember, push puts an element at the end of the array, which is exactly what we want. Push false. All right, and now at the end, we simply need to return the full ages array. 
So return full ages. And that's it actually. So we've done everything that the challenge asked us to do. So we return the vector of true, false, boolean values. True if the person is of full age and false if not. Now we simply have to call the functions with two different vectors and store the results into variables. All right. So first one is full one and it will be print full age and the vector that I'm going to pass will be called years which is this one that I could actually bring down there and var full 2 will be print full age as well and now I have to make up another array here which I don't have yet so let me say 2012 uh, 1915 <laughs> so someone really old and uh, and let's say 1999 so what is going to happen all right cool so person one two three four five which comes from this function call here and then person one two three which comes of this function call all right great now all we need to do is to actually check if our function returns the correct array. So let's just write it here, full one, and yeah, false, true, true, false, true, which is here, false, true, true, false, and true. All right, so this is correct. And now full two should be false, true, false. Right, so this person is not a full age, so it's false, and here true, and then false again. Great, so everything is working as expected. So, challenge completed. Great!